first and foremost, thank you for having me today. I would love to go into a deep discussion about what you just, what you all were just talking about, because it is true. You're in a very interesting dynamic, and what you all do is, is it's beyond question. So, thank you for that. First and foremost, I'd like to uh, thank you all for having me here. Uh, my name is Officer Dimitri Ellison, and we'll be talking about cyber safety and so forth. As time goes on, you will notice my, my, my demeanor will improve or increase because I get pretty excited and motivated and so forth. Before we get started and everything, got a big question for you. How early do you think children are introduced to technology? Two, two years old? One? Interesting. In the womb. Who said in the womb? Wow. That's pretty interesting. To be honest with you, they actually get introduced to, to music while well, not technology. Well, I want to introduce you to somebody. This is, uh, his name is uh, Edwin. And I'd like you to meet Edwin. He's soft. He's yellow. And he's so cute. But Edwin, he's no ordinary duck. He's an app-connected smart toy or smart duck that guides you through his world of stories and games. Rubber Duck Edwin and Animated Edwin connect so you can control the action on the screen. Okay, Edwin, let's show him what you got. Tap him on one of his wings and he'll wave to you. Hi, Edwin. Tap him on his tail feathers and he'll say hello. Move Edwin side to side and he'll dance. Hey, Edwin, I'm really impressed. Gently move him up and down and he'll fly. Let's explore what you can do in Edwin's world. Take it away, Edwin. You can wake him up. You can brush his teeth. Help him catch balloons. Put his laundry away. Nice shot, Edwin. And even help him win the big race. There are all sorts of fun adventures where you can learn, play, sing, and dream with Edwin. Oh, I forgot to mention, Edwin's waterproof. And he's also a Bluetooth speaker. You can stream any song or movie you might want to watch with him. And finally, he's a perfect sleepy time buddy that plays lullabies, white noise, heartbeat sounds. And he's a nightlight. Now, is Edwin not like the coolest thing? <laughs> and can you imagine, can you imagine giving Edwin to your child? You can turn the lights on, thank you. Can you imagine that? The whole concept of Edwin is actually, it's at birth, it really is. We're at birth to about six years, old, six years old. Because you think about it, they actually have a playmate. They have something to play with. But if you look at what all it can do, it can connect with the <coughs> iPad and, and all this technology, but also, well, it connects, you know, you connect your phone to it and you have Bluetooth and all these other things. All this stuff wrapped up in one little toy. And he's waterproof and your child can play and have all this other stuff. I figure in the future they'll even have it, have it as a little baby monitor where it can actually, you know, not just listen, but nowadays record. Because that's something that we as parents, we'd love to like record our child sleeping. That'd be kind of cool and we play later, or make it a ringtone or something. You know, it's a trip on, on as far as the technology that's out there. Well, with that said, what we're talking about is cyber safety, but I wanted to give you an idea as far as when we look at and when we dig into as far as all the different technologies. Miss Barrett, dial 002 for a lost child. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, uh, and, and I, I apologize, but for me, a little bit of my experience, just a little brief overview, because I know a lot of you already know me. But I've been a police officer going on 18 years now. I've been inside the schools for about 10 years. I have interview and interrogation as far as a lot of knowledge and skills and so forth. Most important one is right there where it says advanced training on ICAC and Internet Crimes Against Children. My department, as well as the Rank County Sheriff's Office, we're attached to a task force that go, that's, attached to, that's a part of the Attorney General's office. And what we do is that task force goes after adults that prey on our children. You know, and when it comes down to technology, we have to have a little bit more uh, quote unquote savvy, have to know a little bit more about technology and a little bit more intricate details. And I also teach a lot of internet safety and school safety and drug classes such as DARE. 
for those who do not know, a school resource officer, that's that connection between the school and the police department. We handle all the, all the crimes that actually happen inside the school. We're recognized by the Department of Education. I have credentials that is, that is easily obtainable at Department of Ed, right around the corner or next door to where all of your, your uh, credentials will be held for certification. We also work special details and do a lot of different events, especially uh, as far as monitoring crime statistics, such as, for example, I think it was last week, we had, there was, a, there was an incident in the school in South Carolina where it ended up where the uh, first grader um, was killed. Well, we monitor all of that and we, we look at it and we dig deeper into it and contact the agencies and so forth just to see if we can get more detail as far as what happened and what transpired. Because anything that happens, it doesn't matter what state, what country, don't think for a second that it can't happen here. So we do monitor these things. <coughs> Last but not least, the schools that I covered besides yours, Northwest Franken High School, Northwest Franken Middle, Northwest Franken L, Island Bluff. Also, we go to Jackson Prep, uh, Hartfield Academy, and Good Shepherd School. So for me, I'm, I kind of stay pretty busy as far from school to school. Some of you might have seen Probably you might have seen me on Facebook with Hartfield and with our with our kindergartners here. When it comes down to the kids, all bets are off. I'm gonna do everything I can to keep them safe and make sure they're happy. Happy is that you know I just try to keep them safe. But now when we talk about internet safety, three things we'll be looking at: what popular apps are out there, the laws that are out there, and what you can do. These are all crucial, all very important. And I know, don't get me wrong, I understand it's tight, and I know it's like the end of the day. Trust me, I've worked all day too, so I know it's the end of the day and some of you are tired. So if you're tired, then take, then, then take some of my energy. You're more than welcome to, because for me, this is, this is where I actually go from, from top to top to top to top to top and so forth. Now, when we talk about technology, talking about technology, all these different devices, that's what, what do they have in common? Internet. You can get connected. And a lot of people we don't realize as far as how connected we are. Is anybody in here nomophobic? Anybody? No nomophobia? What's it mean? Anybody know what nomophobia is? No. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Fear of being without a word you tell us. Yeah. Now, anybody here nomophobic? Yeah, tell me about it. Now, keep this in mind. Keep this in mind. Although it initially it looks like, wow, that's something pretty bad. Realistically, a lot of us become nomophobic. Why? Because we have to have the cell phone whether it be connected with our, with our families or our children or something that's going on, whether it be in this state, another state, we have family all over. We're constantly staying connected. Take that, take that same concept, but think about it in the mind of a child. Think about it how it affects the children. Because the next, the rest that we're gonna talk about, I want you to not think about it from your perspective, but think about it from your child's perspective or the children that you teach. Because 93, that actually number is low now. It's a little higher. But 93% of students in children get online. When we say tweens and teens, those tweens, those are, those are the 10, 11, 12. Those are tweens. And then we go 13, you have the word teen on there, so it goes up. 93% actually really go online. And we're, when we're talking online, they can have their cell phone or technology. They can have it on them. And it's still connected to the internet constantly. When you look at 70, over 70%, actually have some type of profile. That's a trip, it's a lot. A lot of them, you have a lot that actually upload photos. A lot of them upload videos. You have that 47 and 14%. Now, keep this in mind, these are not, we're not talking videos such as, such as the, the illicit ones, the ones that are illegal, the things that we don't want our children to do. It could be a simple video, say, to mom or dad or somebody waving to grandma, hey, I miss you. These are, same, these are still the same things. These are still videos that actually get sent. When we talk about it, and we talk and we go a step further, and we deal with the video games, well, video games is a little different. You know, there's a large amount of students that play video games, and we're not just talking your PlayStation, your Xbox platforms. You can also look at your cell phones, or your technology, or your, or your uh, excuse me, your computer games. All these things, they can connect, and they're playing. At one point in time, it was pretty fun to play with somebody you didn't know. 27% of people play with somebody they don't even know. A lot of times, we, we, we don't want our children talking to strangers, but is it okay to play with them online? It makes sense. But that number is actually low compared to what it is now. 
But when you're looking at as far as the technology and you're looking at as far as that connection, at one point in time it was cool to play a game, you're here and another person in another country. It's nighttime here, it's daytime there, it's pretty fun. But one out of 25 actually get requests offline to meet. Now there's something that's called spoofing, where you have your, you can spoof your IP address. IP address, instead of it looking like it is in another country, or, or instead of it looking like it's here, it can look like it's from another country. And that person that's requesting, well, instead of them being in another country, they can be right across the street looking at your child. It's scary, but it is true. Now keep in mind, we're not talking about our mindset, thinking about the children. When we think about it, I want to take it to a, I want to take it a simple approach. Simple approach. I'm going to show you a video. And while you're watching the video, I want you to think about, could this happen in your school? Or could this happen with you? Do you think that last person was her father? No. No, that's somebody we go after. It's ironic. Whenever, whenever, uh, <laughs> whenever they show any kind of image or any kind of picture in, or in a movie or something, and it's the person that's supposed to be quote unquote pet file or whatnot, they always have a mustache. I don't know why. That makes sense to me. They always have a mustache. It makes me, you know, I, I think about it. I'm like, wow, they always have a mustache on me. You know, so it used to be some mustache, sunglasses. Now it's just mustache. What's a mustache? Strange. Strange. But. Could you, could you imagine that happening, something like that, in your school? Or better yet, think about it this way. You all, all of us, and I say all of us because I do teach, I teach there, all of us have that student that when, you, that when they come in the classroom, they're your perfect helper. You know? They always want to help, they want to pass out the books, they want to do all kinds of stuff. So imagine you get that, per, that, that, that student, they come in and, oh wow, they're here to help and you get all the books passed out and you're teaching, you are teaching your heart out. I mean. The students are engaged. They're raising their hands when they should. They're asking a question that provokes another question, that provokes another part of the lesson, and it's so wonderful. And then after that 20, 30 minute uh, lesson, or I know it could be more, I'm just being honest. 20, 30 minute lesson, that one child who was all happy is no longer happy and is completely depressed. Just because an image that just Swarm. Now, mind you, what you witnessed, what you saw, that didn't last any more than about five minutes, if that. Imagine teaching, and all of a sudden, that self-esteem has just been plummeted, been destroyed. 
what you saw is what we call sexting. Sexting, all it is, is actually sending a nude or partial nude image. That's it. Doesn't have any age limit on it. Adults do it. I have heard of, no, scratch that. I know of married couples who have done it. The only reason why I know, because after they were married, well, it's still, it still can be illegal. And, well, that's another story. Anyway, <laughs> the students receiving the pics, did they break the law? Well, I think I gave it away. Yes, they did. They did break the law. But then the big question is, what about the girl? She actually sent the information. She did it in her own privacy. It was her picture. She took it from her phone. How many times you hear children say, well, it's my phone, it's my privacy. I can do what I want to. Did she break the law? Yes, yes she did. She actually did break the law. And when we talk about it, that's what's so important and so strange. Because when we talk about all the different things out there in the texting, that's just one version. When we put in and we add the apps, it becomes all entirely different. It's, it adds on to what some people would call a burden. But when we talk about the popular apps, we're going to focus on about four or five of them. That's the, and the main reason why is because in your level, as far as the, the ones that you teach, these will be the more popular ones that they would actually look into. Now, when we talk about the first one, Facebook. Anybody here ever Facebook? Yes, I figure everybody. Yeah. I know the school will think school has a Facebook page. <laughs> Wonderful thing. Free, popular website, you can do all kinds of things and so forth. But it has pros and cons. The pros, connects with family, friends all around the world. It's wonderful. You know, you can share memories of trips. People can share their own adventures with you. Wonderful tool. Bad part about it. For one, you don't always know who you're chatting with. Just because that person has the, you know, you're, you're, they exchange something with you, you think you're talking to that person, you may not be. That's one. Two, most importantly, people can track your movements. There have been people who have been on vacation and they have taken pictures and uploaded them so they can show family and friends. And one thing it told somebody else that, hey, you're not home, so they break into your house. That has happened. That has happened time and time again. Not to mention, it also, it also can be used as far as to gather information as far as an identity theft. Nowadays, you, social security number is really not that big of a deal. You'd be surprised what information I can get and what I can do with just having your first, your last name, and your date of birth. Now, mind you, you might be safe and protected and doing all these things, but again, don't think about it from your perspective, thinking about it from the child. Children like to share information on where they are with their family. Could this put your child or your family in danger? Absolutely. To think about. Instagram uses snaps, edits, pictures, and so forth, 15 second videos. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pros to it is. Yeah, you can take a video, you can take a picture, make it look so artistic. You can put all kinds of filters in, make it look funny, cool. Bad thing, a lot of kids, a lot of students, they use it to um, validate their own popularity. It's no different than Facebook when you take a picture. You ever, have you ever taken a picture or done something and you want to see how many likes? Anybody ever done that? See how many likes you got? I, I, never, I never did that until to my wife said, oh, you got 100 likes. I said, oh, for what? You know, something I did. I never thought about it. You know, 100 people actually like the picture. That's pretty cool. Blew my mind. But think about it from a child's perspective. How many, what happens if nobody liked it? What happens if nobody said anything? Would that mess with your child's self-esteem? Could it mess, could it, could it affect the child when they come to school the next day? Nobody liked their picture? At this age group that we're teaching, appearance is, is, is massive. It's very important. Very important. Snapchat, ooh. Sends a, and now this <coughs> sends information. You can send a picture or a little five second video or a little video and a you know, person can view it five seconds and it gets deleted. That's the pro story. The con, it's a myth if you think it gets deleted. For one, they can take a screenshot. Number two, there's actually an app out there that you can turn that app on and that app works within Snapchat to record and gather additional information. You're gonna have to dust that. Another thing that's really bad, Snapchat, and I'll read it. Snapchat admits they keep the information for a certain period of time. But then they just say it deletes. They, but they say they keep it for a certain period of time in their privacy statement. Yeah, if you go down to privacy statement, you can see all of this. Way. They even say they can't guarantee that it really gets deleted. Now you don't have any guarantees, it's 
for you, you're looking at, well, wow, they, they misrepresent themselves, so I don't want them. But from a child's perspective, do they, do they go and look at the privacy statement? Do they actually do that or do they just click agree and they're in and they have an account? Can that be a problem? Absolutely. Yik Yak, I use this one last because it has always been a, a significant issue. Because what it does is use your geo, geometric or geographic area. Within 1.5 miles, a person can create an account. And one of the big things about Yik Yak, they say you can be anonymous. They say you can be anonymous, but you have to turn your GPS on. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't make sense to me either. Because it's like, OK, I don't know who I am, but you can track me. Well, the way it works is within a 1.5 mile radius, you can communicate and you can get involved in any conversation that goes on. It doesn't matter what they're talking about. The bad thing creates a lot of cyberbullying, a lot of explicit sexual content, a lot of drug usage, or drug talk, I should say. A lot of schools have actually won in lockdown because of it. A lot of schools and school districts have actually gone a step further and where FBI have been notified and so forth because some people have done threats against the school. Yik Yak has the opportunity, they have the ability, excuse me, to actually block a geometric area. All they have to do is be you know, what the request. But they never say how long they'll block it. I figure maybe a semester, maybe a year, then they unblock it. But that is something that is very crucial because you think about how many different cyberbullying, how many different bullying things that take place for a child. It's constant. It's never stopping. When we were growing up, kids can talk about you and you go home. Nobody says anything until you come back to school. Man, they keep on talking. It's huge. Can it affect a child? Absolutely. With that said, that, using the apps. We went to video. We went apps. What about communicating with someone else? I want to introduce you to someone. Her name is Julie. And I'll let her share her story. It's very interesting. The internet, it's a tool that has to be used properly. You know, it's like a knife. I mean, it's, it's very helpful, but it can also cut you. My name is Julie. When I was 13, I started talking to Tom. He didn't act or even sound like a 56-year-old man. So he was different on the computer. I knew that I wasn't supposed to be talking to him, but I did it out of a retaliation against my parents. It felt nice to have somebody who wasn't always trying to tell you what to do. It started to get more like a relationship where it went from just friends to best friends, more personal relationship than best friends. I would instant message him between three and six hours a day. I was really upset whenever I couldn't get on the internet because I knew that he would be like, what were you doing? And he emailed me like 10 times wondering where I was at. Then you feel like extremely bad about it. It was an opportunity for him to manipulate more. I trusted him more than anybody else. He mentioned, wouldn't it be nice if we were together all the time? And then the thought came up of, running away. The night I left, I kissed all my brothers goodnight, and he was in his truck, and we just rode out. I ran away for three weeks. The day that I was found, we were on our way to Reno. Somebody reported us and saw our truck. I knew pretty much it's over, and I, mean, I never really thought the day would come. He's going to be in jail for 25 years. He sent a letter to me saying that it was my fault and that he was going to kill me if he ever got it out of jail. I was really upset because he didn't say anything about caring about me. I didn't think of his background and I didn't apply it to myself and so maybe he could have done anything to me, even killed me. And so you know, now that I'm back, I feel like there's this huge emptiness inside of me. If I could have talked to people, maybe I would have had a different view on some things. If you're planning to run away, it doesn't.
help solve anything. If it does anything, it makes it worse. Little things can end up becoming a big thing. I kind of wish that I never would have run away in the first place. I would never do it again. You know, the thing about one of the parts of the, of the story that wasn't mentioned, Tom, Tom was actually a murderer. Uh, a couple of the people that he did uh, kidnap, he killed them. And that was something that, one, it, was, it, was, it wasn't mentioned. And when I listened to her story, which is a true story, this really happened to her. The thing that really grasped me, grabbed me was, and I'm, I'm hoping that you all caught it, when he sent her a letter saying that if he ever got out, he's going to kill her because he blamed her. The biggest thing that she was looking for was he didn't say he cared. She was still reaching and grabbing for some type of connection. Imagine and ask yourself this, how many of our students feel that way? That when they come to school, to some of them, the only way they know how a a woman is supposed to act is what they see in you, or how a man is supposed to act is what they see in you. That was, to me, that, that really, that floored me, because that was her biggest thing, and what was the biggest lesson she learned? She's not gonna run away again. Had nothing to do with, uh, I'm not gonna talk to a, a 65, 68 year old. No, it had nothing to do with that. It was like, I'm not gonna run away again. You see, the lesson, even the lesson that she learned, and I never caught it until I was in another class teaching or, or talking with other teachers and teachers said she didn't learn anything she still talks she'll still talk to a 68 yeah you're right Just keep in mind when you look at that self-esteem and you're looking at at all these little factors look how how much he grabbed a hold of her and he still had her mentally even though she found out later that yeah he was a murderer and he killed his previous victims and so forth she was still looking for some type of some type of affection so, with that said, what laws are out there? First and foremost, when we talk about the laws, Mississippi Code 1972, these are the laws that govern as far as what it takes to be a teacher, principal, police officer. All can be found in Mississippi Code 1972. In Mississippi, when we talk about child pornography, we're actually, it's actually called exploitation of children. The main reason why is because pornography deals with really just pictures, exploitation expands it further. So, in, in our law, Child pornography, that is not an act, the, the true definition is exploitation of children. And when we talk about it, um, we're dealing with our children. When someone tries to make any type of child pornography, it's called exploitation of children. And the bottom, that's where you see the statute, 97-5-33. This is the biggest reason why I do what I do when it comes down to the children. When I used to say, when it comes down to my family, all bets are off. Well, I expanded that to children in general. When it comes down to the children, all bets are on. Do whatever we can to keep them safe. You know, and for you all, to be honest, you're in the trenches every single day. You will see it before anyone else, even the counselor. You'll see it before that. And it's really just a behavior. The video that you saw, the, where the girl took a picture and she sent it, and the guys that were sitting on the bleachers well, one had the picture. Let me back up. One, one had the picture. You can't stop anybody from sending you a picture. You cannot. Someone sent you a picture and you received it. Well, if you took it, deleted it, you didn't break the law. If you received it and reported it, you didn't break the law. Once he received it and kept it, that's the law he broke, which is a felony, which gives you at least a year in the penitentiary. The exploitation of children. When his friend said, ooh, show me, he physically showed it to him, and his friend was two feet away, maybe that, Showed it to them. That's the law, bro. Distribution of zinc material. Another felony. Now his friend said, Oh, send it to me. Well, when he sent it, that's the law, bro. Dissemination. Now keep in mind, these are three felonies that he did that they did in a matter of what, a minute? That's how important, that's how significant it is as far as why the laws are in place the way they are. Now, another one asking for the picture. When he even asked, oh, send it to me, he also broke the law. When the boy initially asked the girl for the picture, he was breaking the law. If you encounter or you hear some of your students whispering or talking about somebody wants them to send a picture and so forth, 
keep in mind, this is, there's, a, there's a potential law that's, that's about to get broken. Someone's asking them for it, they're breaking the law. That is something to, that should be a flag for you. That should be something to say, hey, I need to take these kids to the office, or I need to get the counselor in or something. Do some type of intervention. Something. But another one I put up here was creating an account. And only online impersonation. This one is huge because it deals with, and it can actually protect you all. In Florida, about two, three years ago, a student created an account in teacher's name, put explicit pictures on there, and said all types of explicit things. That student, not only did they get in trouble, not only did they get suspended, not only did they get kicked out of school, not only did they go to jail, but they had to pay the teacher thousands of dollars. Because that by itself, I mean, it can be inflammatory. And the one thing that I know I'm, I'm susceptible to, just like you are, is appearance. That's the biggest thing in our, in our profession that we have to always mind ourselves of, is our own appearance, especially when it comes down to technology. Because I can guarantee you right now, there is at least, whether it be the principal or a superintendent, somebody's looking at your, at your social media page because you're representing the school. I know for a fact, my chief and everybody, everybody above me, yeah, I know they look at my pages. And they should. Because for one, they might, they might see something that I don't. Because sometimes a person could be impersonating you. It's very important. Posting things to talk about someone, that's something that's huge. And as far as with the Attorney General's office, like where I said, where I talked about Yik Yak, well, when you're actually talking about somebody or, car, or, or doing cyberbullying or something that effect, well, that's law that they break. And it is punishable, and they do prosecute. I can guarantee you they prosecute. Because what I said earlier about the two, the husband and wife that were sending messages and pictures, well, they were doing it, and then one got tired of the other one, and they were talking about getting a divorce, so now one wanted to file charges on the other one sending the pictures. <coughs> that was within their legal right. Come to find out, the other one did it, so the other one got charges as well. And yeah, I got stuck in the middle of it. Don't get me wrong, I had no problem with it. For me, if it's, it's, you break the law, yeah, there's a consequence. There should be. When we deal with our school, schools have to report everything that goes on as far as dealing with uh, some type of sexual act. They have to report to the police. It's what we call the Child Protection Act. Under that, under that law, if there is a, if there is a, uh, something suspected of some type of sexual activity dealing with a child or a student, they have to report to the police. There is no ifs, ands, or buts. So if you hear of anything, definitely tell someone. Please tell someone. Also, when it comes down to the bullying, uh, when somebody is bullied in Mississippi, if somebody reports bullying to the teacher, to the school, the school has to do something about it. There is no ifs, ands, or buts. That's in the law. Sometimes it can be so severe that they still have to notify the police. These are the laws that are in place for a reason, and that's for us. For you all, when we deal with cyberbullying, Cyberbullying in Mississippi, it is illegal. It's called cyber stalking. The statute of it is, oops, I passed it, didn't I? Right there. That's the statute. And it deals with cyber stalking. Because actually, you can get into more trouble for somebody texting you harassing calls than if they pick the phone up and tell it to you. It's a bit it's a more severe case, more severe charge. Like I said, in bullying, as far as this is prohibited, 37-7301, that deals with it, and also in your student handbook under page 60. So if your students didn't know how to do it or how to find out or how to report it, well, there's, all, there's the guidelines to do that. So last but not least, what can you do? Well, that's where it gets important. If you encounter it, or if you have a student and your student encounters it, notify your principal, your counselor, notify me, your school officer. Tell someone. Internet-wise, anything goes out in cyberspace is there forever. Multiple people will see it, so you're going to need multiple people helping you. Any kind of. If you come up to somebody, say a student, ask you what should they do. Well, you tell them. Well, tell their parents. First and foremost, definitely tell your parents. Tell your school officials. Tell an adult that you trust. Still have to tell someone. I can't stress that enough because so many times I've heard teachers gossip about things and I go in and say did you tell anybody no you're a teacher I mean it's your responsibility why not it's constant but it does happen uh, 
a couple things of importance. If they do encounter it, one, they should never respond to it because if they do, it encourages the bully to keep on. And I know a lot of these things you're like, well, we know this. Yeah, but there's other information because if, when it comes down to anybody being bullied, parent asks you, you tell them to notify the police in your area. Constantly, I can't, I can't stress enough to tell somebody, but never, never, ever, ever delete the information. If someone took a picture, and it's a digital picture, and I was able to grab that picture and turn it around, it has a little uh, digital print on the back of it. It's what we call a hash mark. That hash mark can tell me as far as every device has gone through. The video that you saw where the picture was taken and went all throughout the school, well, we've had cases like that. What we do is we get the picture, we find out every device it went through, and everybody gets arrested. It's a lot of people. I've done it, but for child protection. So yeah, I'll do it again. If it's to help a child, all bets are off. This, this, is, this is the job that we chose. This is the job that we do. Now, if you encounter it, notify the police in your area. If you think it's dealing with your email, notify ITD. Tell somebody. Because all honesty, as teachers, considering what you do, you are more susceptible to cyberbullying than anybody else. Parents, students, other teachers. And I, get me wrong, I love all of you to death. But at the same time, I understand sometimes people do get picked on, regardless of what it is. You have to notify and tell somebody. Last but not least, inside, inside every app, there's a way to actually notify if there's some kind of illicit or illegal activity. By all means, send, it, send that information to them. Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, believe it or not, they've been sued so many times, it's unreal. They stay in a lawsuit because of the information that they actually have and the, the information that they keep. So there's always ways where they can block a person's account. But once they block it, they also save the information. Last but not least, anybody have any questions? Not at all. I know it's kind of warm in here, but I tell, I tell you, you can use my energy. I'll keep it going. If anybody knows me, no, I stay motivated. I can't help it. I love what I do. I get a blast out of it. I'm blessed, man. I get to spend time with you all all day long. It's cool. I'm serious, too. I'm not saying that to joke. Okay. Well, if you do have questions, my information, even my phone number, none of it, uh, none of it goes off. You got the Rankin County, the Floyd, and... Officer Ellison on Facebook. You can even check me out on Facebook. You can like me if you want. It's okay. It is. It's serious. That phone number at the bottom, uh, it stays on all the time. It's owned by the city. If you were to call, the one thing I won't tell you is why did you call? But the one thing I will probably say is I will ask you if you're okay. And some of you I know have already have used the phone number before. I will not, I will not turn you down.